Hello, my name is John Schultz. I'm Chief Technology Officer of MetAlliance. Today I'd like to talk about why sustained drug release matters when choosing a drug eluding balloon. But first, MetAlliance, if you're not familiar, is an independent Swiss company. It's a global organization with R&D and manufacturing in Irvine, California. We have been developing medical products for treatment of coronary and peripheral disease since 2008. Our organization is ISO compliant and the solution SLR technology for drug eluding balloons is CE mark for coronary and peripheral applications. We have a robust clinical program with additional development going on in both AV fistula and erectile dysfunction. The restenosis cascade uh, was described by Forrester in, in this paper in 1991. After PCI, there's platelet deposition and thrombosis at the injury site, followed by hematocyte uh, arrival and inflammatory cell arrival. Around one week later, there's granulation tissue that forms, and through a process of the next three or four weeks, uh, there's active matrix formation, which supports the newly growing smooth muscle cells, which uh, provide the neointimal hyperplasia matrix. So obviously during this entire cascade, it's important to have a drug present that's able to limit the activity of resinosis uh, caused by smooth muscle cells. Another design challenge in peripheral arteries is that this process lasts even longer. In this paper by Lita, uh, it was shown that Resinosis in peripheral arteries can last six months or even 12 months or longer, depending on how much uh, inflammation remains in the peripheral artery. And in drug uh, eluding stents, such as the Endeavor, we learned that very fast drug release from the stent actually is less effective than a, a drug eluding stent that provides at least 30, if not 60 or 90 days drug release. So we designed our solution SLR drug eluding balloon technology to mirror what happens when you implant a drug eluding stent. We also know from uh, uh, stents used in the peripheral vasculature that fast eluding does not win the race. In fact, in this example with the Scirocco, um, the uh, neointimal hyperplasia that formed after stent implant was much higher with the fast eluding drug device than it was with the uh, coating, which resulted in a much slower elution. So sustained drug av availability is particularly important uh, in all of the best in class drug eluding balloons, whether they be from pacotaxel elution or serolimus solution. Having drug availability in the vessel wall for 30 days or even longer is very important to getting the best a treatment effect. And uh, this is just some pictures of some of the drug coated balloons using paclitaxel, which use semi crystalline coatings or very crystalline coatings. You see a lot of the drug and coating is actually released as particles, which then floats downstream to non target organs. So we tried to solve this problem problem by coming up with a new approach. And this new approach is micro reservoir technology. This is a technology that's actually been quite extensively used by pharma to deliver difficult to, to deliver drugs or drugs that are relatively unstable, such as serolimus. This, these micro reservoirs improve drug stability by encapsulating the drug in a protective polymer medium. And it also creates a, creates a precise solution profile and bioavailability because each micro reservoir is an exact copy of its neighbor. They all have the same drug elution properties. So solution SLR as implemented with micro reservoirs is a very supple coating containing a membrane that houses the cat membrane that houses the uh, micro reservoirs, it makes the balloon very trackable and uh, does not result in release of large particles as you've seen with other products that are currently on market. Our next presentation will talk about how DCVs or DEBs can be designed to deliver 
extended drug release at the tissue level with minimal inflation time of your drug-eluting balloon. Thank you for listening.